Hello and welcome to Newspeak, the New Culture Forum's look at the weekly news agenda. I'm pleased to say I'm joined as usual by senior fellows Rafe Hagelmanku, uh, also historian and royal commentator, and back after a gap last week, Dr. Philip Kisley from Leeds University. Uh, three things we're going to be looking at this week. As usual, the themes that arise in them are things that we've covered a lot on the channel. Uh, first of all, London's newest mosque, uh, which will be going up, can you believe it, right in the heart of the so-called glittering entertainment area of the West End. Mm. Uh, we're also going to be looking at these ferocious fires in Europe, ferocious heat in Europe. What does this really mean? Is this like climate change or just a, a short hot spell? And also we're going to be looking at the Prime Minister's initiative to cut down on Mickey Mouse degrees because they are now considered uh, not to be worth that much. Uh, Ray, start off with you. Um, this mosque, which has been reported in the Daily Mail, this is taking up three stories of somewhere called the Trocadero, which might not mean so much to people outside London, but it was kind of quite a, well, iconic's overused, he said, mm. but you know, a very famous mm. um, building in London. Can you ex explain exactly what's going on there? Yes, a legendary building, I would say, and yeah. I would just think actually most people outside of London would actually know it because it is actually so so famous. And when I read this, I mean, if the if the desire of the uh, Muslim billionaire who was creating this mosque was to provoke a reaction, well, he certainly achieved it. Yeah. Not not least with with myself, I couldn't quite believe what I was reading because, of course, the West End, but particularly Piccadilly Circus, is the very centre of the West End, the very centre of Europe's greatest. Mm -hmm cultural nightlife conglomeration, you know, Leicester Square, Covent Garden, and right at its heart, Piccadilly Circus, centre of the British Empire, where it used to be said, if you stood there long enough, every single person in the world would, would walk past you eventually. <laughs> and for that side of that sort of iconic stature in terms of symbolising the excesses of Western culture, of Western values, uh, and of just the, Western, the West's embrace of love and liberty, it just seemed such a strange th idea that you were going to plant in there something so foreign to our shores, uh, a, a Muslim mosque which espouses beliefs and values that run mm. completely counter mm -hmm. to those which, you know, some of our viewers may not actually like all the values that Soho and elsewhere, mm -hmm. but those are undeniably West, Western, uh, West, uh, you know, the Western way of life at its most pure or its most extreme. And the contrast of those two is so great. And I would be reacting the same way about this if it were, I don't know, an evangelical church that yes. were moving in yeah. there. This is not about just about Islam, it's just the stark contrast. Mm. There are lots of places in London which are available. I mean, God knows there are more than enough churches that are lying empty now and which have been mm. uh, desanctified and are now be, have now become other establishments. You know, in Soho, the, I mean, in uh, Spitalfields is famously a church that became a synagogue that is now a mosque. So there are places mm. that can be repurposed, but to do it there in the heart, mm. in the heart of Soho, I can't but think that there's some mischief making here at mm. least. And I'm also, I also just worry about the knock-on effects from that, whether it be confrontations between two very different groups of people, where it be a natural chilling effect that this will have on the surrounding areas. And then will this lead to the spread of, will more Muslim uh, enterprises come into the area, which will forever change the atmosphere there? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it's, it, this is, uh, the Trocadero has been a variety hall and a cinema. I, I knew it as a cinema. Mm. Well, it began as a restaurant. So it was originally restaurant. a very famous Until restaurant, 18, 18, 1896 to, uh, to, to uh, 1965. Mm. Then there was a short break, but also uh, several buildings, a very famous variety music hall was there, mm. the pavilion where yeah. you'd see Max Bygraves and others performing. So mm. for every generation, it's played a different role. Mm. In my days, it was uh, an amusement uh, place. Mm. So it was called Sega World and mm. Funland. Mm. It had mm. Europe's longest escalator and was full of video games and that sort of a thing. And it's remarkable in, in terms of its architecture as well. It's quite interesting. Yes, isn't classical. It? Yeah. So I think there's a, it's symbolic really, isn't it? It's a kind mm. of colonialism, you know, it's taking over, um, which is really worrying. It was also kind of quite interestingly reported, and this was in the Daily Mail actually, it said, you know, that residents of Soho are 
have been up in arms about this and also far right organisations. Yes, I saw that. In other words, mm, it means mm. the residents of Soho and practically everybody else, because as we know now, practically everybody else is far right. Mm. Uh, this has been in the uh, in the making quite a long time. Mm. Uh, I think for about ten years, a decade mm. or so, because originally the planning was for a thousand worshippers mm. I think is that right and then it's come down to just over 300 be uh, below 400 but even so it's uh, I think it's a sign of things to come and with the mayor of London being who and what he is watch this space there's and there be should lots be, more of I'm this just thinking, stuff actually I don't know what I just think okay even uh, you know even if it kind of starts up and appears relatively invisible to the outside world how long w will it be before we get calls to prayer? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. this is this is part of the problem, mm. and there's no surprise that this has happened now that the Labour Party has taken over Westminster Council, mm. because of it's course. a it's a council decision that, yes. that that did this, and it was the Tory Council mm. that refused to allow the previous planning application. Mm. Now I have two I have two uh, friends who are uh, Westminster councillors. And I know for well they didn't vote for this, mm. and it is certainly because of this change in change in, in, in position there. Mm. But you're quite right. You know where, what's going to happen here? I mean, you know, I, I in Spitalfields for a long time you used, you used to get uh, uh, call the call to prayer echoing mm. through the streets there on loudspeakers and so mm. forth. You're seeing it now on Oxford Street. You're seeing people doing that with their mm. own devices. I'm sure it's not going to be long before we hear that in Piccadilly mm. Circus too. Mm. It is, you say, decolonial. De uh, it's a kind of colonisation. Uh, to me, it, it is yeah. to make a point, and I mean, you know, the funny thing is, is that you know, right to the, uh, it's on as you say, Piccadilly. Literally, there's Leicester Square here, which might be known to a lot of people mm. for the cinemas, but then you've got Soho there. Mm. But Soho is no longer the den of iniquity it once was. Actually, no, no it? it's sterile. No, it's, it's kind of very sterile. But nevertheless, it seems to me that to plonk it right there, mm. you know, this is. You're putting a flag down, mm. aren't you? You're putting a flag mm. down, mm. and it's not unlike when Nelson's column was lit up for Eid, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, earlier this year. Yeah, I, just to come back to race point, which I think was a really good point. I would feel the same way about this if it was any kind of, you know, religious institution mm. or religious building, but um, or, or making the repurposing the building for religious purposes. Um, but it wouldn't be. The point is, it wouldn't be. There wouldn't be a church put in there, would there? Mm, there wouldn't no, be anything no, else. No. It could only be a mosque. And I think that's the thing that we really need to think about and take on board. Because as I say, and, and, as, and as you've just said, that there is going to be much more of this in these very specific areas that are um, that that are that go against, I suppose the uh, uh, Muslim values. And it should be noted there are a couple of churches in Soho, there's St Anne's Soho yes, are, yeah. and then there's the Eglise Protestant Francaise mm. in Soho That's Square. Right, the yeah. point is they both predate yes. the West End. Yes. Mm. The West End grew up around yeah. those so yeah. they are actually yeah. part of the fabric yeah. as opposed to importing something yeah. which is completely foreign. But as, as, I suppose the point is the activities around this mosque are going to be anathema yeah. to the to the worshippers who were there and it can only cause friction. It's already caused friction with the residents but no one seems to care about the residents they're just brushed away with quote far-right organizations unquote well, you know, and there's going to be there, there, there will there can only be trouble well it's interesting to see for example the decline of the the, the gay scene gay mm. community in East London which mm. used to be quite prominent mm. and with the rise of Islam there and with the particular dominance of the mosques in that mm. part of London mm. you've seen this exodus of everybody from that part of town who isn't who isn't Muslim and mm. of course and you may well remember there was the so-called Sharia mm. police mm. roaming the area there with stickers saying these are Sharia zones attacking even Muslim sh uh, corner shop owners who were selling alcohol as well as any you know men ho holding hands or women who were dressed yeah. prom promiscuously uh, now is that going to now <laughs> in some point in the next 10 20 years happen in Piccadilly Circus I mean yeah. my god <laughs> this is the bizarre alliance of the radical left and and ex you know or, uh, and Islamism you know not I'm not really just talking about Muslim and I'm not talking about uh, Islam and I'm not talking about Muslims I'm, I'm talking about the, the the alliance between the two extremes and I think it's the radical left wanting this ideology and wanting this religion planted it, right at the heart of our culture and and it's it's kind of my enemy's enemy mentality it's my, it's isn't it friend. it really yeah. is you know because it can't end well
Well, yeah. I've just remembered actually, we had on, on our, our show uh, a very le uh, learned chap who was a student of Roger, Roger Scruton who wrote a book, Beyond the Mosques or something of yeah. this nature. Yeah, sorry, um, Ed Hussein. Ed Hussein. Mm -hmm. And actually, I remember he said that he was a, a, the shocking statistic of how many of our mosques are actually practicing de the Diobandi yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the f f you know, f style of, of Islam, which is a very extreme style, which mm -hmm. actually is this, it has the same roots, I think, as Al-Qaeda mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. Taliban. I forget, so don't, don't quote me on that. But the point is, that's a very, very extreme form of Islam. And so mm -hmm. th there does remain a question as to what type of mosque this will be. Mm -hmm. If it will be a very sort of liberal mosque, then that's probably the best we could hope for. Yeah. But there's also the, every possibility that it could be a far more radical type of preaching yeah. that goes on there. Mm -hmm. it, 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 this reminds me, there was a case about oh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, there was a plan, an application to build, again from a very rich uh, uh, Muslim guy, Europe's biggest mosque. Mm. It would have been in the east end of London. You, when you came in on a flight, it would have been the first thing you saw in mm. London, this huge mm. thing. That failed, apparently, the last hurdle. This is actually a done deal, isn't it, this one? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got yeah, approval, it's so got as approval as one assumes, everything. unless there's some huge protest or whatever. But you see, but the thing is, when you say about conflict, you see, I'm not so sure, because what has happened, admittedly, let's face it, the, the gay scene in Soho or wherever, East, uh, has faded anyway, mm. but uh, all those Brick Lane stories I absolutely know all about. But um, like in those places, won't it just simply there will be no resistance. You know, conflict, you say conflict. I'm not so sure. I think what will happen is that what remains of like the gay scene and so mm -hmm. will just sort of fade away. Yeah, you might, you might well be right. And, and, and if that yeah. does happen, then that's a real tragedy mm. because that's, that's one culture giving way to another culture. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's, a, that's, that's a sense. Well, of I'll give you a classic yeah. example of what's going to happen, I think, is, you know, I lived for, for a decade in Knightsbridge. And when mm -hmm. I first moved in there, there was a lovely community spirit there. There were mm. I'm not talking about the main streets, but mm. on the little streets, mm. you had local pubs where people would go for their drink, local restaurants, br bistros, mm. brasseries, mm. which weren't for the tourists that were yeah. going off to Harris. These were for mm. people who lived in the local community. But because of the, <coughs> of the huge Arabic influence of Harrods and Muhammad mm. al-Fayed and then the Qataris, and all the Arabs coming during Ramadan, suddenly all those local cafes began to become shisha places. Mm. Not places you could have a nice meal, but just places mm. to mm. have a shisha pipe and a Turkish coffee or whatever. Mm. And then of course the Muslims began to buy up more of the pro properties, so of course all the pubs yeah. closed mm. down because no one drinks any longer. Mm. And suddenly an entire community became disconnected. Mm. And now it's a ghost town in the evenings. Mm. And you, I mean, you can think of it in other cities as well. And, and I think of the development of, uh, in Manchester, for example, the development of what's called the gay village there, which was a, a rundown canal area full of old warehouses. And, and they, were, they were transformed, repurposed into restaurants, clubs, uh, bars, and so on and so forth. And, it, and it's absolutely thriving, but an economically very important. What makes me think in, in economic terms about that is if all of that kind of nightlife and mm. culture disappears around that, as you're mm. saying it might do, there might, mm. there might be no resistance, they might just go, then that's surely bad for the city. Oh, it is. In fact, actually, you might know this, actually, if you might remember this. Behind Soho, if you go up Shaftesbury Avenue and then Soho's on the north there, you go up one of the main streets, you come out into a little where there's a market mm. and there was a, a little Muslim meeting place there, like a mini mosque mm. and uh, this is I'm going back 10 years and they would come in and, and basically all uh, congregate on the pavement and pray etc and the, the prostitute local hookers mm. used to like shout and scream at them because they sort of thought right it's almost like they knew instinctively mm. you know uh, you know who was going to be their enemy or not mm. You know, this, as you say, is right at the very heart. Mm. Not that we're holding up Soho in the West End as being, you know, like part of our glorious car, no. but it is part actually of our. I think it is. You know, and it's I mean, what makes London London? Exactly. It's, it's it's a particular model of urban development. What you've been talking about before, you know, this this place was, was developed in 1919. It went through various iterations. It was a it was a, a restaurant. Then it was a. Um, 
uh, a hotel and so on and so forth and the, and, the, and the place changes around it that's a kind of organic change isn't it what mm. we're talking about here is a very definite red line in the sand that says mm. this is going to be something different this isn't the development of culture the development of the society mm. and the community mm. around there from here on in this is different and this is how it's going to be it's almost a kind of authoritarian change and for me that's really frightening what do you think therefore i know what people are doing they're watching this they're saying yeah we agree so what do we do about it hmm. i mean seriously what do we do about it this is a elected council if I'm, one's going to be all by the book this is okay they're labor but frankly these days they could be Tory, actually. I wouldn't say mm. the Tories would have put their foot mm. down with this. They would, they would say, oh, it's out of keeping with the local area, mm. maybe. Mm. But I doubt it. Mm. So what do people do about this? They'd probably start with the residents, actually, and think about you know, where, how far they've gone and, and what have they actually done to, to push back against mm. this. Uh, and take it from there. And you have to get legal representation. You have to, you have mm. to play them at their own game. You know, mm. the, the, the thing is, you, you're, you're probably going to lose. Mm -hmm. you're, you're really probably going to lose, and it will be an incredibly long game anyway. I, think I mean, there are there are examples of buildings being retained because of the the, the, the vital role they've played in the culture of, a, of an area, mm -hmm. and so there could be a case to be made. Which is, it's, it's, it, will, it will change. The, the intrinsic nature of an area. And there are other examples of communities buying the building, but they couldn't do that because it's huge. They, they just couldn't Well, and it's a billionaire who owns yeah, it and, and owns most of the area. And that's owns the area yeah. as well. Britain's meanest landlord, yeah. he was called. He was Joe. called Britain's meanest landlord. Who is this guy? <laughs> this is, who is the guy? He's a, a, a billionaire um, Muslim landowner who owns vast you know, swathes of, of land in, in London, including in Soho. I think he also in, in, includes the Criterion Theatre across mm. From the picket from Piccadilly, but during COVID, he was known as Britain's meanest mm -hmm. landlord yeah. for not being willing to um, compromise over rents and so forth. And people mm -hmm. were in lockdown. Okay. Well, anyway, I just I think maybe, maybe uh, when you start hearing these call to prayers going out, if they ha if that happens, um, then basically, then maybe you might see people may wait a minute. What the hell's going on? going all the way across Leicester Square, yeah. I can't believe it. That would be too late by that public. point, yeah. I think so. Yeah, and, and if it doesn't happen before then, then yes, the culture's, mm. the culture's finished as we know it. Um, another thing that happened this week, actually, which was appears to be like a sudden, um, you know, attack of maybe common sense, how far it will go, we don't know, is this thing that's happened with Rishi Shunak, yeah. uh, talking about the need to, now, actually, Let's be quite clear about this. But what is it? The need to curtail Mickey Mouse degrees, by which I think is meant those sort of rather ridiculous degrees that are worth very little, don't get you jobs, but which far too many people are taking on. Uh, Sunak called them rip-off degrees, I think, didn't mm. he? Uh, which was re really quite strong language, uh, but probably very accurate. Mm. So I think he's talking about degrees that have, say, for example, under 60% of people actually graduating. So that's a real red flag. You know, lots of people go on to the degree and then don't finish it. OK, he's talking about degrees that don't end up, as you say, in in meaningful employment, uh, professional employment. So he's talking about degrees that have that don't give students uh, subject specific skills or transferable skills. I think those are really important. Mm -hmm. You know, the ability to research properly, the, the ability to assess evidence, the ability to do things that will get you jobs in a variety of professional contexts. Um, I think some of these degrees you've also got to think about, well, who's on them? And they might well be international students who are just coming here for the visa. Yeah. That's why they don't graduate. So you've got to look at the institution, look at the degree and say, what the hell's going on here? I think he's right. but. This was Theresa May's mm. uh, initiative, wasn't it? And this was back in 2017. So this is classic Tory, you know, dragging their heels forever and ever and ever. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, he's only putting kind of um, caps on numbers, isn't he? But perhaps some of those caps might be right down to zero. But, but uh, before we get any further, what is the situation with um, why should it even be something the Prime Minister is talking about? Is there any government money involved in any of this? 
government uh, governments do fund universities, don't they? So, well, and and sort of, governments yes. fund re- well, they do, but yeah. via arms length organisations, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they do. So there is money involved, but I don't think it's about money per se. I think it's about the election in twenty twenty four, and I think right. it's a really good uh, strap line for them to say, look, we're cutting, th- we're, we're stomping down on on these Mickey Mouse degrees, on these rip off degrees, where people. Are, all, are, are practically going to spend the rest of their life in debt and they're not going to be able to pay back their student loans. Well, yeah, and it's the election in 2024 and it's the election on Thursday. Three by-elections yes. are being fought. Yeah. And, it's, and three, the, yes, three by is being yeah. fought on Thursday and it's no surprise that we've got the Prime Minister coming out now with guidance policy on transgenderism in mm. schools. We've got him coming out saying this about, mm. about, um, about universities and we've got the illegal migration bill in Rwanda. I mean, this, the problem is this was all been lovely in 2010 <laughs> mm. or 2012. Or at least Come 2017 yeah. when Theresa May started. Yeah, or 2019, but it's yeah. all coming now. And it's, sorry, it's far too little, far too late. We see what you're doing. Yes, it's great if you were going to have another two terms in office, but it's not going to, it's not going to happen. In terms of money, the reason that there is a great concern is not so much because of government money, it's because students are leaving university with 45 thousand pound debts mm-hmm. having gone to do these Mickey Mouse courses and you know if you, if it includes you know things like photography and and so forth where you're never going to have enough money I think you earn 22,000 pounds mm-hmm. as a salary after that sort of a degree yeah. so you're never going to be able to repay these huge loans that you have I think it is high time this is done I think this whole idea of 50 percent plus going to university mm-hmm. that Tony Blair brought in was a huge mistake it's, you know, it devalues the value of university degrees. So actually, if you did have a university degree before, that would be a source of pride and people would actually think you were good enough to come into a job. All degrees have been devalued because of this. But also, of course, it means that people who could have had productive careers through apprenticeships and gone into vocational mm-hmm. courses mm-hmm. have now gone and ended up in very soul-destroying career paths because they were told to go to university. Germany understood this. Germany has a wonderful system of apprenticeship and mm-hmm. vocations. Mm-hmm. One of my criticisms of Margaret Thatcher is she didn't actually allow manufacturing to carry mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. There should have been a great su- surge towards that part of our, mm-hmm. of our industry. And I think that it's high time that something was done about this. But there's another issue that no one talks about here, and that's the fact that people that go to university end up becoming far more left wing mm. Mm. and this is another big issue which yeah. we must address and no one is talking yes. about it yeah. we know from Brexit to everything else if you didn't go to university mm. you have one set of beliefs and values yeah. and people going particularly to these Mickey Mouse courses <coughs> learning about gender studies learning about critical race theory but even just doing film studies I think and you know with, and that, that sort of stuff they're, be, they're coming out as brainwashed individuals and I think that also needs to be checked I think there's something else as well. I think all of those points are really correct, but I think there's something else as well. And it comes back to this idea of who's on these courses. It's not necessarily just British students. And my guess is the minority will be British students. Bear in mind how many people we had last year coming to live in this country, which was 1.2 million. A lot of those are overseas students. Mm-hmm. And it comes back again to my point before, a lot of these people are just coming in. They're cultural tourists and they get the visa and then they can do anything they want to. Uh, some of these courses, I mean, it w- it was uh, looking up for this for this show. I mean, you know, you can quote endlessly funny ones, mm. but there's one I saw in Advanced Bakery, <laughs> you know, and charcuterie, a, d- a degree in charcuterie. Yeah. You know. I mean, this goes right back to 1992, I think, when the uh, poly- the old polytechnics were uh, submerged yeah. into into yeah. the university centre. Yeah. The polytechnics worked beautifully because they offered vocational courses. You know, uh, as soon as they watered down their their aims and objectives and tried to go into a research environment, which they never were mm-hmm. in the first place, they were pedagogical teaching powerhouses, and they into a, a research context which they shouldn't be. The courses just went to nothing. Mm-hmm. So, you know. A bakery course, that's fine as a vocational course. You wouldn't mm, have it in a, mm. in a, in a university probably, mm. but it's fine as a, as a, as a vocational course. Mm. When that's placed into, into, a, in, into a university environment, then it becomes, what, bakery and gender studies. And, and you know, how can mm. you have well, there's a, one on Harry Styles. Exactly, you know, yeah. yeah. There, was, yes, there, was a, there was a degree a few years ago, I think it was at the University of Salford actually, which was a degree on Take That. Yeah, so oh, you know what you can do with that. Uh, but the thing is, you see about this as well is, you know, the point about them being left wing. Um, they come out indoctrinated, but also I imagine they come out 
and they become more and more resentful because mm. they basically they've been had. Yeah. I mean, they've been told they, this is the answer to everything. So you probably start to get well. There's nothing worse than left wing and resentful. I mean, yes, the whole idea that yeah. capitalism has failed me. Yes, exactly. I was told that if you strive for success, mm. you will be mm. rewarded. Mm. I've left with forty-five thousand pound debt. I can't get onto the property ladder. It's no surprise that socialism, mm. in their naive view of it, has some appeal. Mm. No, it is. Uh, it is. It is. It, what do you think of this? I mean, I went. I don't know about you guys. I went to university when there was like five percent mm. of people going. Right, automatically. The left starts saying, "Oh, you're just pulling up the, you know, you're pulling up the, the steps after you, and all of this." Not, not true at all. Uh, we had grants, mm -hmm. right? I actually think we should go back to that situation of grant. These are government loans anyway. Mm -hmm. Then apparently, something like forty percent are never going to be repaid. Yes, they, that's they, right. They just, yeah, they just simply well, you have to earn off. over twenty-seven thousand yeah. pounds yeah. to start paying it. So Most people it? won't get to that level. Where that, is I mean, that's shocking, shocking to think about, about isn't it? Yeah. They're not even going to earn twenty-seven thousand. No. But then there, there are interest rates of you know eleven to twelve percent on that, which is another scandal. Actually, mm. why mm. interest rates? If you're going to be giving this sort of a loan, it should be, I would say, interest-free. But Labour have been saying uh, during this time they've been saying. This is typical Tory, you know, basically elitist. You're going to be uh, cutting off, uh, you know, entry to, uh, you know, poorer people. Could this be, you know, any more wrong? Yeah. I mean, the fact is, what well, white working class guys are the most, they're well, the least likely to go to university, aren't they? We all know this. How many times have you said this? The, the, the response from, from the Labour Party and the left generally has, has just been quite absurd because, mm -hmm. you know, these these degrees, I think most people recognise these degrees to be Mickey Mouse or rip off for all the reasons we've just talked about, employability, uh, mm -hmm. completion mm -hmm. and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And yet here are the left saying, you know, you're cutting off ambition for young people. Mm. Ambition what? I've got an ambition to do the worst degree in the country. <laughs> it's absurd. <laughs> it's completely absurd. Yeah. And that that response really sums up the whole attitude around higher education, you know, because people are just happy to sit back and fail. Mm, and mm, I can't think of mm. any other sector, well, viewers will probably write it and say, well, what about this sector, what mm. about this sector? But education is one of those, isn't it, where you can just quite happily sit back and fail, and the Labour Party and the Conservative Party as well will applaud it. And you would hope that a party called the Labour Party would take pride in the work of one's hands and would actually <laughs> yeah. celebrate mm. of those who choose to go down a vocational well, career path. Call me old fashioned. <laughs> I said it before, someone said, oh, how irresponsible. On this programme, in fact, I said, if you are young, if you're male, white working class, uh, uh, male, don't even think about it. Because not just about the, not because you're going to be doing a crap degree, because also what happens now at universities, you will be made to pay for your very existence. Yes. You will be seen as the kind of, mm. you know, the font of all that's evil. Mm. And, you'll, and you'll be 40 grand, you know, mm. in debt as a result. Don't do it. Mm. Build your own companies. Do you just think about it before. What do, you, what do you think of my question? Neither of you answered. But would you, do you think grants and going back to a far more selective situation is better? Yes. I do, yeah. I mean, what percentage should be the sort of the requirement of the population to go to university? I don't know, but yeah, I do think it's much better to have a grant system in place. I, I do, we yeah, need to have an education system that serves the working environment, and whatever that working environment is, which is, which now is is digital, is media. Yeah. We 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 don't we don't manufacture things and we possibly should do more of that mm. but we certainly create knowledge and we sell knowledge uh, an education system that should revolve around those things mm. and, 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 and it doesn't at the moment no. but just to get back to one point um, and I suppose it's a, an, an addition to, to what you were saying before this might well resolve itself because people will stop going if they're not going to get anything out of it if if you know generation after generation is is going to university and then just landing itself in debt having rubbish mm. jobs people aren't going to do that forever mm. are they mm. they're going to stop and they're going to think well we can do something else we can look to youtube we can get all the education we need from youtube mm. if you've got any now so you mm. can you can educate yourself completely and and, and and properly and there are all sorts i mean i wrote about this in 
uh, fighting back. There are there are mm. summer schools. There are there are uh, organisations and people we know, like the Academy of Ideas, offer edu formal educational yes. experiences summer, yes. uh, right up and down the country, so people can look at that and they can curate their own experience. That's the most important thing. Mm. I mean, it is. Uh, how many? Young people actually now at university is it fifty three percent? It's over fifty percent. It's over fifty percent. It's kind of just instinct tells you that that's look that can't be right. Yeah. You know, that just purely in terms of people's uh, abilities. Um, before we before we go, uh, huge heat wave in Europe. Is it just like a heat wave? Climate change? What do you think? We don't really talk about this subject much on this program. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> <laughs> because but why? Why would that be? Actually, I don't know. Is it because we're so uninterested in it, or we don't know much about it, or what? Well, I'm not. A, I'm not a scientist, and so I don't feel sufficiently qualified to speak with the great, the great passion with which I address other topics. Um, now, look, I, 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 whenever we do broach this topic, I'm sure I get into trouble with viewers at home because I have a much more, uh, much more, I would think, nuanced approach to this than I have with other topics, perhaps, in that, you know, yes, I think there's been too much alarmism of late. So, for example, seeing images of Europe behind weathermen, which are all pink and red and orange, whereas before, for the so same they, temperatures, they, orange, yeah. they would be green and yellow and orange. Now, mm. these bright magentas mm. and so forth. I do think that's it. That's that's bizarre. It's clear sort of nudge psychology being put in there to make us feel that things are worse than they actually are. But at the same time, we are going through high forties in Europe now. This is because of the El Nino effect, which is which is a, you know once and once in a blue moon happens that raises the temperatures. But it is acting on the base of increased temperatures, mm. and the, the, and it's clear with my eyes that I can see that we have more. Uh, more extreme weather than ever before. You know, once in a generation events are happening now once every five years. Mm. Once in a century events are happening every ten years. Mm. Yes, you know, there are still records unbroken from before, but records around the world, which used to take 40, 50, mm. 100 years to be broken, are being broken every three, four, five years yeah. now. The, the world is most certainly heating up. My problem is with the idea that it's up to us to pay the price for it, that we have to, you know, we have to pay for boilers, we have to get electric cars, we have to stop eating meat, we have to mm. stop farming. I don't think it's, it should be, the burden of this should be placed upon the shoulders of the average taxpaying Brit. I think it's up to industry, yeah, yeah. China, yeah. America to deal with these issues. That's what my, that's I, what my I, issue I, is. I think you've just put your finger on the, on the, on the, on the nub of it there, right? I, whether it's global warming, whether it's a, a peak, whether things are going to uh, uh, level out, we don't know. Okay, in the 1970s, they were talking about global freezing, weren't they? That's only 40 years mm. ago. Uh, we were saying, as, as, as I said in my uh, talk at the, at the conference, you know, we, we've had uh, catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe that just hasn't happened. Mm. The next one's 2030. It's something to look forward to. Uh, but it's China, you know. You India would mean too. not get an India too, but but China yeah. is 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 exactly. way out in front. You and me not going on holiday this year is going to yeah. make no difference whatsoever. When China are, are producing twenty seven percent of uh, uh, carbon dioxide emissions and one third of greenhouse gases, it's China. You see, the thing is, is that with this, it you know because I've had to it's one of those we all have don't we not exactly blind spots like this but we have ones that don't kind of engage us quite as much <clears throat> I find that I can't disengage um, my attitude uh, to the political response mm. to climate change mm. but that's the thing from the actual climate the, the actual thing that's so, what you must do I think I think that's very yes, important because so when you look at like just stop oil when you look it is there was always a huge anti-western anti-capitalist yeah. element to oh. all environmentalists in fact you know they, they'd be quite open about it they were mm. they were once Marxists most of them and this is a wonderful way to get in and so that kind of but then you sort of think well actually do you think that this is climate change and is it man-made well, there's no doubt that climate change is happening. I don't think. Mm. Do you it's think it's man-made? 
well, this is where I say I'm not a scientist, but 99.9% of scientists, and I mm. think that is quite a lot, mm. Mm. do say that, that it's man-made. But as I say, it, and if you, you can quite clearly see it from 1850 onwards, yeah. Yeah. with the start of the Industrial Revolution, there has been a warming of mm. the planet. It's incontrovertible. The question is, again, how you deal with it. Now, Britain only accounts for 1% of global... Exactly. And, and of that 1%, how much is actually yeah. down to the population mm. of the yeah. country? The it's this idea you can't take planes, that you have to give up your car. Yeah. That's where I, I have an issue with, but I don't actually mm. deny the fact that it's clear the weather is changing yeah. and the climate is changing yeah. and things that are more extreme and it's costing trillions of dollars, trillions of pounds mm. to deal with wildfires, to deal with the flooding that we're now, we're now seeing. What about it's, you? It's, so it's just you the response to it is the same as every other single response to everything. But the actual the issue, do you... Well, the, the, the issue, yes, I, I agree with Rafe. You know, it, it's clearly getting warmer, isn't it? And we are clearly having these spikes. There, there seems to be a record every year. Last year here was the record hottest day. It's been the record broken... In, in Europe, so so something is happening, mm. and and you, you 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 would have to think it's, it's yeah. some of that is man made, but it's not just Western, is it? And mm. and, and as Rafe says, we you know we're responsible for one percent of it, where other other parts of the world are, are, are responsible for practically all of it. So it's like it, it just makes me think of. Um, slavery and reparations you know people are obsessing about a statue in Bristol and what happened 300 years ago where in Africa at the moment one in seven people are in some kind of bondage but nobody cares about that nobody cares mm. about the Middle East it's all about it's all hair shirting mm. and hating British I mean, it, was, it used to be a case with the environmentalist movement is that uh, population was a big thing mm. You know, uh, the world is going to be just simply swamped with a massive increase in population, uh, which of course the population has gone on increasing. Yeah. But they dropped that. They dropped that because it got embarrassing. Because well, because actually, capitalism had brought more people out of extreme poverty exactly. since the nineteen eighties, yeah. and that's yeah. really what but changed also everything. They stopped them. having children. Oh, yeah. But a lot, a lot in of Europe in the West and then in Japan. Yeah. But basically, it got to. I think it was Anthony Webwood. Sorry, Anthony Webwood Ben Tony Ben, <laughs> who actually um, in death he's reverting to his old name. He, he said this, and in fact, oh, what you really mean is, is there are too many brown babies. That's, that's why they stopped. Mm. You will never get the climate change people to talk about population. But the fact is, is that there are people, we talk about this as though, yes, you know, this is sort of like, it seems obvious. There are many people who say that this is the biggest scam of our time. Yeah, including mm. many of our viewers. Mm. Like, I was, you know? If they've come to that opinion through research and so mm. forth, that, that's excellent. I, I, I've come to mm. a different conclusion on that. What I would like to see more exposure of is the so what right mm -hmm. okay so the world is getting hotter mm -hmm. all right yes there are more droughts and fire yeah. and, and wildfires and so forth but what actually are the actual the worst side effects now i've heard 10 million people uh being exposed in through uh, rising sea levels well mm -hmm. Does that really mean the whole world has to take account mm. of its mm. of its uh, activities? I'd like to see actually what we could do to counter. You know, if it means air conditioning in, in England, as it, like you used to have in New York all the time, you have air conditioning. Why not in London? You know, mm. yes. those sorts of things you can easily adapt mm. to. What do we? I don't mind if we have to adapt as a society to a warmer climate. I'd like to see what actually are the real bad effects that could happen. Exactly, and the key thing is that the remedy is worse than the disease, and that, and and they they want the remedy to be worse than the disease. They want to lock us down. They want 15-minute mm. cities. They want to curtail our freedoms. Mm. But just to finish, there's a, there's a lovely point that uh, you know you were talking about uh, uh, population. Um, some of the uh, the more extreme activists are saying that they are not going to have children, and I can only say that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely that's a good thing. But th that, that, that you know, joking about that is the response of many people actually mm. to this whole thing, isn't it? We, we, we can't bring children into this world, we're only adding to all the problems and everything, mm. you know. Which is, well, given how work it's going, I'm not sure that many exactly. people want yes, to have children in this world. But that, that is a cultish response in its, in its own way, isn't it? Anyway, we will probably, we will get many comments, I imagine, <laughs> uh, having pinned colours to masts on that one. So, uh, well, thank you very much, Philip, thanks very much. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, do leave comments, which we've, we've been having a real kind of uh, role on this program recently, and uh, thank you very much for that. I mean, uh, some of the comments, you know, talk about engagement, they're wonderful. So um, please keep doing it, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website. 
newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you. Thank you.